Okay, I want to thank you for watching this video. This one's about slip covering a Parsons chair. It's a typical dining chair. Uh, you yourself might have one just like this. As you can see, this one has a skirt. Some of them do not have skirts on them. But we're obviously going to keep the skirt on, so the slip cover is going to have the skirt attached to it as well. Now, the way I do slip covers is I used to, in the past, do what is called double cutting. I would take the actual top fabric, fold it over, and cut it to the piece of furniture. But I've changed that over the years to a pattern. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a pattern. I think it's a little easier. You don't have to worry about expensive fabric making the wrong cut because pattern fabric or muslin is a lot cheaper than your top fabric is going to be. And if you do get it right, everything looks good, which I'm sure you will, then you can do multiple slip covers with that same pattern. So how I start off with uh, any slip cover is still the double cutting method. I take a cloth tape. It's important to take a cloth tape and I find the center point and I went from the back of the cording here on over to the other side to that cording and then found a center point. And I did this in this part here in the um, outside back right over top of the skirt. I did it at the outside back at the very top. And then once you get this pen here, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but once you get this pen centered, you can just uh, use your eyes to center that one too because obviously it's right next to it. So what I did is I just simply went from cording to cording, found the measurement. This particular point was uh, eight and one quarter. So I put in uh, the pen at eight and one quarter. Now to double check it, just simply go back to the other end like this and sure enough it's at eight and one quarter. So if you're not sure what it's going to, you know, if, if, if you hit it right on, then just turn your tape around and you'll be fine. And I also do that with the tuck-in area. And I went from the cording to this cording, found the center point, and then I eyeball, eyeballed this pen right here. And then I did it right at the top of the skirt at the seat front. So I'm going to run my muslin fabric straight on down to make the pattern. And I'm about to get that pattern uh, ready in just a moment. Now, Nicole's going to do this slip cover with me, and we're going to do what's called a banding on this and a modern skirt. This particular skirt here, uh, we call a kick pleat skirt. And um, some people, I think, call it a tailor skirt as well, but we call it a kick pleat skirt. And we're going to put banding in this one with a modern skirt. Okay, so it's not going to have the pleat here. It makes it even a little easier. So if you want to do this, I know you can do it. It doesn't take much time, and it's a nice weekend project. So we'll go ahead and get started. So now you see the muslin that I'm going to use, and you see the width of the chair here is obviously a lot smaller. So the width of this muslin is about 55, 56. And what I'm going to do instead of putting the center here and then wasting all this, I'm going to put it on the table over here, measure the amount that I need to cover from cording to cording, give myself some room to work with, and then cut that off. It's probably going to be about half uh, the width of the muslin here. And one other thing to keep in consideration, if you're using this type of liner, or muslin, whatever you want to call it, that it's going to have a clean edge and then what we call a rough edge. So you're obviously not going to want to use the rough edge. Let's do the clean edge, easier to work with. And incidentally, you can use any fabric that you want. It doesn't matter if it's an old sheet, you know that. It does, it'll work. As long as you can make a pattern out of it, it's all that matters. But uh, don't use paper. It might be a little bit of a challenge. But definitely use an old sheet, use some old material, and put it on the back side. Let's say it's printed on the front and quite busy. Well, then just use the back side. It's going to be easier for you to see your chalk marks and such. So what I'm going to do is take my measurement, take it over the table, cut it in half, come back and start pinning it on. Okay, now we're just going to put this muslin onto the chair, lining the clean edge up with our pins. I'm going to turn the chair around so you can see what I'm doing. I like to work with the outside back first. You have to run it a little bit past your skirt. So I came uh, maybe say four or five inches. I don't have to do that much but a little bit past the skirt is fine. We're going to do anchor pins up to this pin here. The top of the outside back. Try to keep that as straight as possible. Do a couple of pins. 
here. Now work from the bottom out like this and anchor it going toward the chair like that and then run your hand up like this here. See how much excess I have? I mean I could even done a lot less. I did half the fabric. So I could have done a lot less than what I did. Now in this particular application we're going to run it straight over but I'm still going to put a, a line mark right here and then when we table it we're going to add the half inch to that. So you'll see all that but what I used to do is pin fit all this everything and you know, it, it did a nice job but it just took a lot more time so I like having the pattern like I said earlier for multiple slip covers. So we're just going to roll straight on over. I'm lining it up with the head of the pin. Let me turn the chair around. And then to this pin here. And when you anchor, go pinch the, uh, the fabric or the material. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can see that, how I did that. I didn't just go into the furniture. I uh, pinched it and had the stick part of the pin come out on the other side. So it's really anchored. It's, it's not going anywhere. And then make sure I'm lined up at the top here, which I am. Look at it, make sure it's straight. I'm gonna, just going to stick some pins in there. You don't have to pinch them in this area here. I am going to pinch this one. But you need to be careful you don't snag yourself. You can easily do that and snag your hand, your arm. So I push the head or the stick part back down into there, and that, that's a little bit better. So I went in, out, and then back in. There's two ways you can do this slip cover if you wanted to. Either one's perfectly fine. You can make a, a cording go up on the top up here and then a small band and then your skirt. Or you can just do the cording up here and make the whole thing skirt. That's great. We're not going to do that. So I'm going to roll mine down, which is going to leave me a little bit of uh, work to do here. If I had the cording coming up here, this would just be an intersection. It makes it a little bit easier than trying to make this wrap around. Let me move this aside so you can see on this uh, side here, wrap around on the side. So it's going to be a little bit uh, more challenging if I'm not putting the cording on top. But there's, there's a couple of good reasons for that. One is that you, you don't have to, to make a separate piece, which actually makes a little bit more time, not much. does look nice, but when you're sitting on the slip cover, when you have cording on top, it will shift, and you're going to see it even more so. And of course, it's going to shift a little bit down here, but when it's sitting right up here, you're going to feel it. And a third thought may be you, you'll feel it when you're sitting there, so you may not like the cording there. And cording generally wears out faster than the actual uh, material itself, so you could get some wear on that over a period of time. But nonetheless, it's still nice and, you, and it has been done and you, can, and you can do it. It's just really a, an option that you have. So I'm going to line this pin up there. And we're going to do the pinch method. I went in and I'm going back out. And I'm trying to get it to go back in so it doesn't snag me. Now, I hope you can see this closely here. I'm lined up with that pen that I marked earlier, which is the center, and I'm going to put a pen, the head facing that away, so it digs into it in case I pull it too, too far, the fabric that is, that the pen will dig into the furniture. Keeps it more in place. I'm walking this over here. And then we're going to have a pleat here. We're going to move this back. All you're trying to do is just get to the contour of the furniture. Now I need to anchor this down here, the seat. Lining it up with that pen. It's like I pulled it a little much there. Now let's put some pins on the top. And 
going to try to pinch it here. Sometimes you can pinch it, sometimes you can't. And that's looking good, looking real good. This is our tuck in area. Now let's work on the outside back and the inside back. Let's start up at the top. I'm going to the cording. I'm feeling with my index finger and my thumb. I'm going to put it right next to the cording, that pin there. Now let's get rid of some of this excess. going below the cording, at least I hope I am. I'm going below the cording, which is attached to the skirt. Now you see what the fabric naturally wants to do there? This can be a bit tricky because if you cut it in the wrong spot, you know, you got to kind of, you got to start over. Okay, so now we're going to put a pin right next to the tuck-in area where the inside back and the seat meet right up where it starts, right there. Now let's step over here and cut in, in this direction, getting close to the pen there so this can lay down a little nicer, a little easier. Let's cut this little excess off there. Now if you don't want to mess with this intersection, just put your cording up here and bring them together there. Might make it a little easier for you. These Parson chairs are kind of kind of fun because they can be done quickly. Take that anchor pin out because the fabric wants to roll down a little further after I did that relief cut. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm folding this fabric here that's attached to the seat over, and it's making a small crease right there with the fabric from the inside back. I'm going to put a pin there as well. Now, move over here and then come in this direction toward the pen, like that. See, it's starting to lay down pretty nice there. Okay, now take my stool and start pinning down from the top. Cut this toward the pleat area, like that. Already have one two pins in there. Roll my hands gently. Don't pull too hard where you, you make your center line here pull over. So don't do that. In fact, I could put another pin there. Gently roll it around. Let's pin it down the cording. Now go past your cording area. What I mean by that is this here that's attached to your skirt. Go past that, go down. Make sure, see this fabric's getting really short right here, right up to the cording. I need to be careful that I don't short change myself and cut in too far. So if you need to, take this area right here and go further out that direction to give you more seam allowance right here. Let's do that, because obviously I have more fabric here than I do on this side. Lay that one in there. Okay, now, let's just 
just cut this open. That trying to stay a half inch away from those pins. See a little puckering right there. Let's see if that's going to be able to come out. Let's take that pin out. And put it here. Let's even these two pieces of fabric up. Now you can leave that like this. Now let's get a pencil. Put another pin here. So I want this to be more taut. Let's readjust this pleat. Then we'll get our pencil and start marking where the lines go, or the seams go, rather. Let's just clean that up a little bit there. Not to pull too hard, but I'm trying to pull that, pull that down. So let's put a pin in here. You see how that pleat started to dissipate a little bit when I pulled down. Let's do this. Put another pin in the front too. It's easier sometimes with uh, reupholstering because you can definitely pull and staple, and it's not going anywhere. Slip covers, they have their mind of their own sometimes. And nothing really to enforce them to do what you want because they just lay there. But that looks pretty good. Let's get a pencil and start marking our seam areas. Let's take this for example here. Now I don't want to mark on top of the cording. I want to mark because the cording is not the seam. The seam is, or the cording is attached to the seam. So we want to get up closer to the furniture. Don't mark the top of the cording. If you do, it's no big deal. It just doesn't, uh, it, it gives it a little bit more room than what's necessary because a cording is about approximately very close to a quarter of an inch or what have you. If you do that on both sides, it's really a half inch. So you want to go where the fabric is attached to the furniture, not where the cording is on the top. So let's go ahead and put our pencil there. It's not easy to do sometimes, but try not to go back and forth. You have to at a, on occasion, but you're just going to make a messed up looking line. But make sure you're making a mark. You don't want to get to the tail. And what is this? So what I mean is don't go back and forth and then pressing really hard in one area and not another. Your line will get skewed. Let's turn this over or turn this back here around and make a mark here. So what I'm pressing in is right here, not on top. This pencil could be sharpened. Here I'm feeling where that cording is going. So the cording's running down here. Simple little turn like that, just following the cording. Look at that. That's a little better. Look at that. It's probably be your standard pencil, anyhow, you'd have around. Okay. Make sure I'm looking here, make sure my uh, center pin. It's not only there, but the fabric is right next to it. Draw a line right here. Look at that. Nice and easy. Let's make a mark right here. Now you're getting the picture, obviously. We're just making lines where we want our seam to be.
Let's remark this one. You know what's great about chairs like this is this chair is from the late 70s. It had some velour one there and they were going to trash them and we took them, reupholstered them, now we can make slip covers for them and they're a good frame so they have many more years of, of use in them. So these Parsons chairs are, are easy to come by and they last for many years. And so uh, if you see them, go ahead and grab them and you can do different things with them as well for uh, the cording. You could do lip cording, um, fringe, whatever you want to put on there. You can make it your own. Do outside back fabrics, different than the inside backs. Make them unique. Making a line where I want my seam to go here. Pushing it down just a little bit in there. It's important to make sure you have tuck in because when you sit down on this, it's going to give and you're, you're, you're going to rip it eventually, if not immediately. If there's no give, you need that tuck in to go inside here so they're two separate pieces. Okay. Now, Make sure I got all my marks. I did this, this, that, this, that side, this, and this. Now the thing we need to do, it gets confusing on the table. I have a couple more things to do. I have to mark my pleats, okay? And I have to mark inside back, outside back, simply by just going down inside back like that, like that, and then the OB here, outside back. And what I like to do as well is I take, I don't know how exactly how accurate it is, it gives me something to look, uh, to, to go by rather, is I take a, a small uh, level, and I know that it's leaning back and such, but I try to keep it as straight as I can, and I make a mark, and I put an arrow up. So it doesn't get confusing on the table, because when you take it apart, and you're looking at it on the table, it's like, what is this? Oh, it's the inside back, where's the up? And then the, the straight line helps me in case the fabric is a stripe. It gives me something to go by. However, you can use this as your line as well as to what is straight uh, up and down. So, you know, if you, if you forget that point, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. This right here, you can put seat front like that, or seat, um, seat platform rather. And um, this is going to be the skirt below there. And then this is facing up like that. Just anything that you can think of that's going to make it easier for you when you get to the table. So I'm going to finish marking my pleats here. And I am going to get my level and make a straight line there and do the up and do that for the outside back. And then mark this pleat and then we're going to go to the table. So what we thought would be fun to show you is how to do um, our take on a modern um, update to the Parsons or any slip cover for cushions or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our fabric. This is just a mock-up. We're going to take our fabric and we're going to do what we do as drapery banding, which is we're going to sew in this piece of fabric and then have the same body fabric there. This allows you, especially on something as small as a Parsons chair, to have a really dramatic wide stripe, which you see a lot on the cover of Durley, um, House Beautiful. They have it in a lot of the um, catalogs as well. They'll do a dramatic stripe, very broad, all the way down the piece of furniture and this is a lot of times how they accomplish it especially the one that if you did notice on the um, website cover of Durley fabrics when they had it in that awesome turquoise blue with the white and it was a love seat everyone called them to ask for that fabric mm -hmm. it really wasn't a fabric it was two fabrics it was their Durley um, velvet in turquoise and then they're velvet and white, and they just made the broad stripe. So this is a way that you can accomplish it. 
Go so ahead. how do you know how wide to make it? You just choose your width. So I don't want it to be too pronounced on something as narrow as this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a five inch, but you could choose any, any dimension you want. So you could do two if you wanted to. That's going to be a lot more work. But I, I recommend one, mm -hmm. and I recommend somewhere between five and nine inches, depending on how wide the object is. So, but you always have to include the seam allowance. So if you right. want to do a five, then you're going to have to cut. Yeah, so this, six. this piece of fabric, this piece of fabric just has a nice cut edge, and so does this one, but mm -hmm. my banding is already pre-cut at six inches. Okay. So now I'm just going to sew that up and show you what it looks like sewn, and then we're going to get uh, started on doing the actual fabric for this slipcover. All right, great. Let's do it. Okay. So this is the, we've sewn both ends of the banding. You take it to the uh, ironing board and iron that seam, both of these seams open. That just gives it a nice flat texture. So you'd iron both of those open. But this is just our mock-up to show you what we're trying to accomplish. So you have the fabric divided by your banding. The only thing I'd say about this is you definitely want to do this before you table your pattern so that you have this fabric already made, your new fabric made. With the banding. With the banding when you're about to table your fabric. You want to iron it really well. And the other thing is, is that you want these two fabrics to be of similar weight. They don't have to be exactly the same thing. But I wouldn't use a polyester and then a heavy slubby linen. So mm -hmm. this one's a, a heavy canvas and a heavy linen. We're in good shape. Um, but you don't want to use two things that are just two different weights because they won't sew together well and they just won't look well together. Okay, so here's our fabric completed. Our band is sewn in. We fold it in half with the seams on top of each other. It's very important that the seams line up for our half mark. And then just flatten out our fabric and here's our pattern laid out for Paul to take over for cutting. Okay, we also ironed each of these seams too so they lay down nice and flat. Now, the width of the fabric is just about perfect here on, on size-wise, but it's not perfect if we were going to put uh, cording on the outside back and on the inside back. So just let me show you this real quick with the chair. So we're going to skip having the cording right here. And the reason being is because it's a modern chair, so we just figured that it might be best if we just rolled it straight over and not have the cording here. So we'll have the, the uh, banding going straight up and straight down, but it's not going to be broken up with the cording. However, if you're going to do this, you cannot use a fabric that has an up on the fabric. So in other words, if it's a, uh, a motif of some kind that obviously needs to be upright, you can't be doing this because one long piece that I rolled over like this, this is going to have an up. You see the arrow there and the arrow here. So obviously the um, inside would have the motif going straight up. But when you went over the back, it's going to be upside down. So let's not do that. You do that with a solid, you can do that with a stripe, as long as there's no shadow when it's going in a different direction. You can't do it with a velour because it will have a shadow a different direction. You like to have those going up in the, the same direction. Incidentally, um, or a um, velvet, not a velour, a velvet. Since I mentioned it, the velvet always goes down. The pile goes down. Okay, you'll be able to tell when you rub your hands on there, okay? And the pile goes out the seat. So it's smooth toward you with a velvet. So if you're using that, uh, don't do this. You're going to have to put the cording in the middle here. Okay? So you're going to have to have me cut this half inch outside your lines. And let me get uh, better scissors. So now we just now finished this up. I want to get this out of the way. It's just a perfect copy of the muslin. And now we need to, this is the inside back and the OB is outside back. So now we're going to do the seat platform. We'll set this over here. Okay. So we have the exact same fabric. 
that we've sewn in our banding, five inch banding, and our fabric on either side. So I'm going to fold this in half. Again, I've already ironed it so that the seams lay down flat. And what I'm going to do is very carefully lay out one side with my seams flat, kind of walk it out. And then you fold it in half, but what I'm really paying attention to again is the seam. I want the seam right on top of each other. So if my fabric is just a little bit different here, I don't care about that, but I want my seam to be right on top of each other. I'll hold this down here. Uh -huh. And then once you get it, you just walk it out. And we don't need to go too far because all we have left to cut right now is a seat platform. So now we're going to cut the skirts for the slip cover. And what we need is 17 inches deep. And how you come up with that figure is the skirt itself from the cording where the skirt is attached to the upholstery down to the floor is 15 inches. So you need to add 2 inches because you're going to have an inch and a half underneath the skirt. At the, I'm going to explain all this to you when I do it. But an inch and a half underneath the skirt at the bottom of the skirt. And the other half is attached to the slip cover. So the total is 2 inches. But I'll explain it all to you. But what I want to do is put this fabric, smooth it out. The up for this fabric, even though it's a solid, it's always a good idea to keep the fabric running in the same direction because there could be a shadow. If I were to take this fabric, cut this strip off, turn it around, and lay it next to it, it could cast a different shadow. So when you can and always try to keep it up in the same direction. You just choose which one it is. If, it, if it's not um, necessary due to the fabric that it has to be this direction. Make a clean line. Don't, don't trust that this thing looks is straight even though it looks straight. A nice straight line there. As I said, 17 up. There. Now I only need two, and I say that because these are the side skirts. The front skirts are going to have the banding in them, and we have that somewhere else. I haven't cut that yet. So we're going to go ahead and cut these off. I put a little arrow for the ups, so I know that this has to be attached to the slip cover. So we're just going to come a half inch down here and put an arrow for the other side. So that's up. So one arrow here, arrow, uh, arrow and then this arrow there. Okay, that line there, or that cut straightened the fabric out so it's even. Let's cut it free. And on the Parsons chair, we measured left to right and came up with needing the number of 21 and a half. So my arrows are there. Looks like it came off a little bit here. I'm a little uneven, but I straightened it up. That's fine. I'm lining this up to the edge of my table. 21 and a half. I'm lining this up to my table. Give me a straight edge. Now let's go over 21 and a half. Let's cut this off. And I'm finished with these. I'm going to have to cut the front and the back skirts. Now you noticed if you did, I just cut my arrow off. And that's okay. I just got to make the up mark again before I forget. So that's okay. Mark right there. 
mark right there. Now these are our side skirts. <clears throat> I'm going to do the front, the back skirts, same manner, same sizes. And then I need to do my liner. Okay, now we're going to use this for our liner. It's the same material we use to make the pattern for the slip cover. It's important with the liner and any liner you're, you're using for skirts is that you railroad it. So instead of using them this away, you must make the length this away. Okay, so it, it makes it, it has very little stretch that away. So it has more stretch this way. See that, see that give? Look at that. When you're sewing it, it's going to be two different tensions. So you want your liner to be uh, as, as stationary as possible. And that's the railroading length. So what we're going to do is lay it out like this, okay? Okay, line it out. Get all your wrinkles out as much as possible. Like that. Now I have a line already here. Let's see if it's good. I'm putting this up against my table. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. So you want it as long as possible. So with slip covers, Nicole continues to make one long piece of liner. So she this here, the length of it is 56. So we're going to do two of these, okay, long, 56, but the finished height of your skirt. So with the top fabric, you make it two inches longer, and with the liner, you make it the finished size, which is going to be 15. Okay, so let's just go up 15 from the edge here. Trying to make sure it's, it's lined up with the table. One mark there. 15. 15. moved a little bit but it's fine. I'm going to cut this up here. Give me a clean edge, easier to sew. Okay, and they're both even. And then all the way down. So maybe this makes a little more sense now that I'm cutting it down about the railroading. So now this is your up and this is the length and it has less uh, give in that direction. It has a lot more this away. So that's the skirts. That's all. I think two, two would be fine for this job. Now I still need to cut the front skirts with um, 17 by 21 and a half. But this one's going to be with the band. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now we finished cutting the front and back skirt. I made sure that I have my arrows. So this is up on this skirt and... This one's up because I folded it on top of itself. So the arrows are correct. And what I need to do now is I measured the um, distance between the front skirt. So I'm looking at the chair right now. The left side to the right side, I measured the distance. The front is 19 and a half inches cut because that includes the one inch for sewing. Okay, because I got to attach the seams in uh, where they come around from the sides to the front. So the actual size of the chair is 18 and a half, but I have to add an inch for the sewing. And the back uh, is actually 17 finished, but I need to cut it 18 inches for the seam allowance. So what I do, my point in telling you all that, is I have to measure, since we're putting in this band here, the size of this, which is 24, actually 20, 25 is good. So it's 12 and a half right in the center here. And I'm doing this because I have to measure out to keep everything even 
from this pin mark. So let's just make this one the front one, okay? That means that 19 and a half, I have to cut out 19 and a half on each side of the skirt. So what I need to do is go from the center and then take that out. So the half of uh, 19 and a half, Oof. nine and three quarters, okay? That's half of 19 and a half, nine and three quarters. So I put nine and three quarters right here on my pen my center pin of the band and make a mark right through there with a stick pin. Come over here, nine and three quarters, and do the same thing. As soon as I, oh, I only got two pins. That's my center. Okay. Now nine and three quarters here. And that should be nine and a half. And it is, nineteen and a half rather. And that's that covers our sew allowance. So you do the same thing here. We're hoping this is square, and it is. So I'm gonna take this pin out since we've already finished there. It's twenty-five. Half of twenty-five is twelve and a half. I'll make a pencil mark so I can get this pin out of here. Okay, now I need nine and three quarters, so I'm moving my tape measure over to nine and three quarters. Just make a mark. And 19 and a half, make a mark there. Now I don't want to cut them both this size because the back is not as wide. So there. Remember the old rule, it's no different. Measure twice. Cut once, no different with upholstery. So make sure everything's good. We got 19 and a half, looks pretty good. 19 and a half. Now that's the front skirt. Now, my arrow is just about to be cut off again, but I'm putting a little F there for front skirt. So Nicole knows that's the front skirt and she has a small arrow there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Yes, 25, looks great, let's turn it over. Don't mark on the front. If you make a mistake, you're gonna see it. So always mark on the back of the fabric where possible. Okay, 25, so it's 12 and a half. Now the back is a little smaller. Okay, see this is my arrow, I gotta make sure I get this thing straight. That's my up on this one. 25. This is a this is coming out just a little bit, so I think it's right here. I'm gonna cut this off. It's coming up 25 and almost a quarter. So I'm just gonna shorten that up. It looked like it was coming out on that end. We're right on now, 12 and a half. Now, what do I have for the back skirt finished? Back skirt is 18, so half of that is uh, 9. Go over 9, make a pencil mark. I'm remaking my arrow because it's going to get cut off. 9, make sure I did it right. Got 18, 18. Okay, now I'm going to cut these after I make my line up, and I'll give these to Nicole, and she can sew them on. Okay, so what we have here is all our skirts are going to go on the slip cover. We have all our arrows facing up, one, two, three, and four, a total of four skirts. This is the front skirt with the band, and this is a side skirt without a band, back skirt with the band, and another side skirt. Now, we haven't pinned together just to give you an idea. This is not going to be a kick pleat. It's going to be a modern skirt. And what we're going to do with this one, which you do not have to do if you do not want to, is we're going to run cording down here as well when we join these together. So instead of having just a straight, flat skirt, which is modern, it's fine, without cording, I thought it might look kind of nice to go from the outside back all the way down with the cording in the corners. But if you want to keep it flat seam, perfectly fine. 
Now, this one here, this piece of uh, cording, as you can tell, has the band in it. So that one's going to go to the front skirt. We have another one that's going to go to the back skirt here, and then the solids are going to be on the sides. So I'm going to turn this over to Nicole. We're going to sew this up, and after we're done with that, we're going to put the skirt on, or sorry, the liner on here, and we sew from the bottom up on your skirt, okay? So you would start doing your, your sewing here on the bottom of your skirt, and then we're going to pull this up. Get this out of your way. Let's just say this was attached right now. Okay, sewn together. Then we're going to pull this up, and it, and it makes up the difference where your skirt is pulled up. But we're going to show you all that, okay? So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so we've sewed the liner onto the bottom of the skirt panels. And now what we're going to do is, and you just do this at home, is you just take it and fold it over. And you match the top edge of the good fabric with the top edge of the liner. And when you do that, you're going to iron it. And as you can see, then you have about an inch of your good fabric going up underneath. So this is, this is the underside of the skirt. And this is the top side of the skirt. So we're just going to iron, get a nice crisp edge here as best we can. And then we're going to sew the skirt onto the body once we've sewn the body together. Okay. So this is our seat platform. This is our first piece. You can see right here we have a cutout, a notch. Some people call it a dart. Depends on if you've sewn clothes before. We're going to sew both of these closed, both of those, and the same thing on the one dart on the inside back. Once we've done that, it's just a matter of sewing the seat platform to the inside back and then sewing the sides together. So it's just simple sewing. You just follow what you already know from either tailoring experience or sewing other cushions, that type of thing. So we're gonna, you always start with sewing closed your darts. Um, start with that and then just sew the two pieces together. It'd be this inside back is gonna get sewn to the seat platform and then this inside back is going to get sewn to the outside back to make the chair back go back together. Once we have, this is the body, once we have the body sewn together, then we're going to sew on the skirt and we're done. Where, where do you start first when you do the sewing? You start with the darts. You start with the darts, but then when you start to sew the slipcover together, where do you start? With the seat platform to the inside back. Did you start just like right on the end? Just right exactly, right end and to then, end. Then you do the sides or something? or. Yeah, well, this is going to have, this is where the skirt's going to be attached because mm -hmm. this is a seat. So the yeah. only other side would be the inside back to the outside back. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so we have the skirt here. I've already ironed it. You see a nice crisp line here on the bottom of the skirt. And here's the top of the skirt. Just put it together like this. And line the liners up like this and sew this together straight on down and that's going to be one continuous tube or circle and then we're going to invert it and sew it onto the slipcover. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so you see the slipcover here is on the Parsons chair and it's all completed and the band turned out really nice going straight from the back and the back of the skirt. Yeah, we matched up the cording. You have to cut and splice in your cording. So there's my little cut in. But that way the, it goes straight up the back and then all the way over the front and down the front skirt. And we did something different as well. She just now said the cording going down here and the cording down the front. Normally you could put a kick pleat in here, but we think it looks kind of nice and somewhat modern. Yeah. So in fact, the Parsons chair started out as a modern chair. It gets its name from the Parsons School of Design in the 1930s in Paris. It was uh, styled after arts and craft. Uh, art deco and things like that so or styles like that I should say and it was pretty pretty well uh, accepted it was originally covered in in leather and uh, nowadays you can have them where wings are on the back you can do them where the backs have scrolls or you can have them where they have a camel back as well so there's different styles that a Parsons chair has or it can just be straight wooden legs as well so we hope you enjoyed the video well, it was a pretty good time to, to get it completed. So you can see it's an easy project. If you do the pattern, you can do multiples at a time. You don't have to do the banding in the middle, but it does add 
a very nice style to it and it's personalized as well. Different things you can put on there is lip cording around there and um, as well as fringes or if you don't have a skirt on the upholstery, you don't need a skirt. Or if you have uh, legs that are wooden, you can do a skirt with a kick or box skirts that are only like maybe six inches down. So either way, your style is your way. So we hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to look for the other videos as well. If you see a Parsons chair, don't pass it by unless it's worth passing by. Thanks for watching.